I'm Camille Keaton, and this is Nerd Remix. Where in hell are you from anyway, Private? Sir, Texas, sir! Holy dog shit, Texas only steers and queers come from Texas, Private Cowboy! And you don't much look like a steer to me, so that kind of narrows it down. Due to some violent content, parental discretion is advised. But your regenerated circuits are torn to synchronously, and that causes concatenation in the intermediate amplifiers. Fucking mumbling, stuttering little fuck, you know that? Sweet Leaf. Oh, what's Sweet Leaf? It sounds like Black Sabbath. It pops at the beginning of it. Oh, it cool. Well, I know it's uh, flu season, and it hit me hard, but right now, I'm on so much flu medication, even the wall's moving. Good times, good times. So what do you got to talk about? Uh, I got to talk about, like, my top 12 favorite movies past 2000, and also, I want to talk about my series. Uh, what, what do you have to talk about today? I was going to talk about uh, Dario Argento's Dracula 3D. I was going to talk about uh, the upcoming uh, free YouTube thing. And I was going to talk about, uh, I don't know, I was probably going to critique your uh, best of 12. And I'm going to start doing my uh, year-end thing that I did last year, the best of the movies that I reviewed in the last year. So. All right, good. So you have that to look forward to this podcast. Should I start with my series? Yeah, go nuts. Why not? All right, my series is out. I personally think it turned out really good. Tom Jeezy scored it with his uh, musical talent, which he likes to call Liquid Fish. And he's actually the producer, since he's my right-hand man. And uh, I think the show turned out good. What do you think? Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, it seemed we got a good response. We got a lot of uh, views on that and uh, a lot of positive feedback. Yeah, for only one day, I mean, for uh, the first episode, we have 256 views, 20 likes, one thumbs down, which is okay with me. I'm all right with that. I believe we'll get more views as the series progresses. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, I really had fun working on it, and plus, uh, we have to work on the second one. We, we bumped into a few problems with the second episode, but it's still scheduled to release in 10 days. So, you know, on, uh, you know, the first of next month, so I guess 11 days. Absolutely. And I hope it gets just as good as a response, and hopefully we can only go up from here. Now, I really want to get into my top 12, well, let me count this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. This is my top 12 movies past the year 2000, because somebody actually told me there was no good horror movie past the year 2000, and I said, bullshit, you know? There's, there's been a few good ones, and so I made a list compiling 12 of my top. Now, these are only my top for right now, and I might have forgotten a few. You know, nobody's perfect, but these are my top for right now, and they change all the time. Uh, my first one would have to be 28 Days Later. And yes, I think this is a zombie flick for those are, who say, you know, Oh, they're just infected. They can shove it up their ass. Those are zombies. And everybody, I mean, come on, they go around, they attack you mindlessly. What does that sound like to you, Tom? It sounds like zombies to me, and uh, actually, if I could interject at this point, although a lot of people shit on it, I really like 28 Weeks Later, too. So. That's actually on my list of ones that I didn't like, but people say are good. Oh, okay, well, I guess I fall into that category at that. <laughs> All right, my next one is everybody gives this director shit. Rob Zombie, everybody gives him shit, but I love The Devil's Rejects. I thought it was really funny, really good gore, and it just seems like people have a blind hatred towards Rob Zombie's movies when The Devil's Rejects was, in my opinion, a pretty damn good film. In my opinion, that's a modern classic. A lot of people regard it as that, and I think even all the people that hate Rob Zombie or hate on Rob Zombie can agree that that is a quality film. If they can't, then they got their head up their asses and they're hipster douchebags. So. 
Yeah, I mean, the movie even shocked me the first time I saw it in movie theaters. So, oh, yeah, the violence and the, the way it's just, everything's just treated so matter-of-factly and it's excellent. Yeah, my next one is, uh, this is no, this is in no order, so don't expect my last one I say to be the top best. This is in no order whatsoever. My next one is a George A. Romero flick. His, uh, Land of the Dead movie, which I never had a problem with. The only thing I had a problem with was Big Daddy. Them having a main zombie, you know, a main type of zombie, which Children of the Living Dead did. And I, I really hate the fact when zombie movies have, like, one big zombie, which all the zombies look up to. I mean, in Day of the Dead, Bub was fine, because, I mean, it's not like he was a main zombie or anything. It was just one of the zombies they tried training. But in this one, it's like this zombie knew everything. Well, okay, enough shitting on it. Land of the Dead, I thought, all in all... It was pretty damn good. It had a lot of action, lots of good gore, and some very good zombie effects. I agree. I thought uh, John Leguizamo was really good in it, and uh, it's a quality film. John Leguizamo was the shit in it, and plus the main actor who played in, uh, what, what is that dude playing? The mechanic? Or, uh, no, that's not it. He plays um, in some TV show. Yeah, and then Aja Argento. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> boy, 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 boy. Now my uh, next one, people sit on this very rarely, but I do see it happen sometimes, Ginger Snaps. It's a werewolf movie, and it's really fun, and I wanted to choose one werewolf movie. I was stuck between Dog Soldiers and Ginger Snaps, but all in all, I think Ginger Snaps is uh, the better movie. It's, it's, really, it's a really fun teenage sort of flick where they tr sort of make it sexy, but not too sexy like where it goes towards the Twilight genre. This is more of a werewolf that will fucking kill you. Yeah, I agree. I, I even like the sequels. So. Yeah, same here. The sequels are pretty damn good. Alright, my next one. This can be argued if it's horror or not. I say it's it's pretty much horror. It's a fre frailty. It's a Bill Paxton. He directed it. And he stars in it. And Matthew McConaughey is in it. And it is a really good twist and turned horror movie where these guys battle demons. Uh, you know, decent movie. I generally don't like stuff with Matthew McConaughey, but it was alright. Yeah, well, uh, what was his first movie? Uh, fucking uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, <laughs> The Next Generation. Yeah, and I think it was shortly after that he quit wearing a shirt in public. Yeah, I made a joke about that, saying that uh, because of the next generation, he couldn't get the stink off him, so he just stopped wearing deodorant all in general, because what's the point? All right, the next one stars Batman, or how can we say, Christian Bell. It's American Psycho. When I first saw this, I thought it was great. The ending was great. I don't want to spoil it in case nobody saw it, but I'm pretty sure everybody saw it. And the ending has one of those endings which makes you think. It doesn't have too much gore, but it does have a lot of good character development. The main character, Patrick Bateman, you will fall in love with him. And I love American Psycho. Uh, stay away from the sequel, though, even though it has the smoke, not Mila Kunis, and Bill Shatner. Stay away from I saw the sequel. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Now, this next one gets so much shit, but I think it was the best they could do. Really, I think this is like one of the best versus films of all time. Freddy versus Jason. They have a perfect mishmash of the... Freddy atmosphere, and then they have a perfect match of the Jason atmosphere. Now, people complain, oh, Jason is never afraid of water. In fact, you see him in the water all the time. Well, I don't give a fuck. They used pretty much, you know, what they could and made it pretty damn good. Freddy versus Jason. Uh, decent movie. I, I kind of liked it. Um, it's much better than the shit that the fanboys have been clamoring for. Jason versus Freddy versus Ash or Kenhead or something. Stupid variation of that, so yeah, kudos. Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash was a good comic book, but I, I thought the film was alright. I mean, it had the gore, and it was funny, because, you know, Jason, I mean, Freddy is usually funny, and it has some pretty good Jason murders. What else could you ask for? Yeah, not bad. I actually thought Jason X was a lot of fun. Not a bad film. Jason X was a lot of fun. Now, my next one is uh, Planet Terror. It's a Robert Rodriguez film. It was part of the Grindhouse double feature with Death Proof. Now, while I like Death Proof, I wouldn't call it one of the better films of 2000. But Planet Terror was easily action-packed, gore to the max, easily one of the best films after, uh, past 2000. You know, so much has been said about that, being the Grindhouse thing and all that. 
and a lot of people say it has some nods to like some uh, Italian movies from the 80s and everything. I don't see it. To me, the the techno weirdo score and some of the lighting and some of the shooting, you know, the shots in it are like John Carpenter to me, you know? It's almost like an action movie. Yeah, I really don't see how uh, Planet Terror really has much in the way of uh, the Grindhouse films except for a silly plot. But uh, that, that's about, that's the, the only thing that I see where it's really Grindhouse-ish, you know? Well, you know, that goes with that one. Oh, yeah. Nice. Uh, this one. It's based off a video game. Yes, usually video game movies are stupid. And I hear this one gets a lot of shit, but when I first saw it, it was creepy as hell. And when I see it today, it's still creepy. This is probably the creepiest movie I've seen past 2000. It's Silent Hill. It was a creepy flick. I've never played the game. I watched the movie. I didn't understand a lot of it. But it really had a cool atmosphere and a cool vibe to it. So, yeah. And, and, you know, like the fucking, I don't know, man, just the build-up of the film, the suspense that it builds up to, I think it's pretty much amazing. Now, this one, the next one, is more of a comedy, so to say. It's the first Final Destination film. That, you know, that series, uh, it's a one-trick pony, but, you know, hey, people still listen to ACDC how many years later, and they've been making the same record for 30 years, so. I like the first one, not too much the sequels, but the first one hit all the notes on the right spot. It was the it was original for when I saw it. I've never seen a film quite like it when I first saw it. And so I think that that in itself is enough to give it, you know, a top score. Good. Uh, next one is a little known film. Well I think people know it now. It's a ghost film called Session Nine. Very good movie, I liked it. Yeah, and the atmosphere and the creepy outness or whatever you call it, pretty damn good. Now let's go on to the last one. This is part of, uh, I believe, those eight films to die for or something, which is very weird because I usually hate those. Now, I might be wrong. This might not be on one of those, but I believe it's uh, part of some movie list, and it's called The Children. And it's from 2008. And it, yeah, it's one of those ghost house underground films, and it's uh, called The Children. And I found this film to be really good, and plus, you know, it has kids dying in it. You don't see that a lot. I thought the build-up was good. I thought the payoff was good. And I just thought it was a good movie all in general. Very eclectic and uh, interesting list. There's a lot of choices I wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't have, uh, I don't know, guessed out of you. I don't know. Yeah, well, that's my list. Uh, why? Which which ones do you think would you not have guessed that I would have liked? Uh, Frailty was surprising. Um, I don't know. There's quite a few. You know, I, I, granted, it's you know it's arbitrary. I could I could give you my list. One thing that I didn't think that, that you know I think should be on anybody's top ten list of the last ten years would have to be The Descent. I don't know about if you enjoyed that movie as much as I did. But I thought it was good, but the beginning annoyed the shit out of me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, one which I was about to choose but I didn't was like Trick or Treat because that was more like a, I don't know, it was more like a cute Halloween film and not really a horror film. And another one was uh, Martyrs. I loved the beginning half of Martyrs where it was just suspense, it was psychological, and it was supernatural. And then in the middle they just ruined it by doing a torture porn film. Yeah, but talking about uh, foreign films like that, I would say uh, you could throw Frontiers on that list. Um you could probably throw... What, of uh, crappy films or of good ones? Of good ones. Uh, High Tension. That's good. I think was a good film, except for the ending kind of put some people off. But uh, I thought the ending was horrible on High Tension. But everything else leading up to the ending was really good. And uh, two other movies I'm a big fan of that have come out recently is uh, The Hills Have Eyes remake I thought was really well done and The uh, Last House on the Left remake. Uh, I actually have uh, my noteworthy remakes. Uh, mine is The Hills Have Eyes is on it, Dawn of the Dead, My Bloody Valentine, and call me crazy, but I have a soft spot for this remake, even though it's not really a remake at all because it has nothing to do with the original, but Sorority Row. Yeah, that wasn't a bad film. Yeah, I mean, you know, people always give shit to remakes, but I actually thought Sorority Row was actually pretty damn fun. And I'm going to get beat, over, beat up over this, but I like Rob Zombie's Halloween, so fuck it. Uh, I thought it was good until it got to the remake territory. Like, everybody hates the part which I love, with, uh, them showing him as a kid. Yeah, that was, that was pretty good. I mean, you know, I, I like the movie, so fuck it. You know. 
Uh, and, uh, oh yeah, here's one remake which people will hate me for, but if you don't think of it as a remake, it's pretty stupid but strangely entertaining. It's Black Christmas. That was pretty decent, you know, and uh, actually last Christmas I went back and revisited the original. I uh, got picked up the DVD and uh, we watched it as part of our holiday viewing. Yes, my house is pretty fucked up. We will be watching Thanksgiving later this week. So. <laughs> nice. I should watch Thanksgiving too on uh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, what a fun film. Okay, man, on to you now that I gave my little list and everything else I wanted to talk about. What do you have to talk about? Let's grow. Uh, speaking of lists, um, I'm going to do my year-end list, my best of Nerf Remix list like I did last year, and that would just be including films that I've reviewed in the last year. They don't necessarily have to be have released in the last year. It's just stuff I've, I've reviewed since January 1. And uh, short list on those, there, I've, there's some amazing short films I, I saw this year. Uh, probably the one that stands out the most is Crestfallen. But uh, two of the stories that I, two of the segments from the uh, Psycho Street anthology were really good. Uh, Hypochondriac and uh, the other one was uh, Lewis, which was fantastic. Uh, feature length movies, I've seen a lot of really good ones this year, man. A lot of really good indie features. Beverly Lane really sticks out. Uh, Leech, uh, The Feed was another really, really good indie flick. And uh, there's been a lot of good performances, man, by some uh, actresses. Like like I said, uh, two of the films I've mentioned earlier have, have Deneen Melody in it. She's really uh, breaking out this year. And, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of cool stuff I've seen this year. It's going to be hard whittling it down. And I think I'm, this year I'm going to add a couple of goofy categories, too, just, you know, to give shout-outs to people who have, uh, you know, put some fucked up shit out there. So. I think I know my favorite movie of last year. It has to be The Gruesome Death of Tommy Pistol. Has to be. I have to see that. You keep telling me about it, and uh, it's still not it. released yet. Nobody, nobody has it. I mean, I t I contacted the director and asked to review it. It was like, here you go, and uh, I wrote a written review because I wanted to actually write out my full thoughts and ideas, besides just you know coming up with it on the top of my head like we usually do. And you know, like not enough can be said about it. It's really damn good. It's a, it's, it's more of a comedy, but it has some good gore. It has some good monologues. It's overall a damn good film. Yeah, good times. Yeah, you know, um, there's a lot of stuff that. What's the deal with uh, people sitting on films for years waiting for distribution? I mean, I, I've seen the Bokitsi tapes like a year ago, and uh, fuck, I even put a review up of all the boys love Mandy Lane, and those still don't have a release date. It's because they want enough money, I think. Like, uh, everybody's just offering them crappy deals. I mean, if you made a movie and it's generally good, wouldn't you wait for a good offer and not the first person who comes along like Troma? I uh, think yeah, that's true. true. Um, you mentioned Trick or Treat earlier. That, that kind of suffered a similar fate. You'd heard about it for years, and then uh, it finally got so. Yeah, Trick or Treat actually turned out to be a pretty good film. Like I said, I wouldn't call it a horror film. It's more of a... I don't know what you'd call it, but I really wouldn't call it horror. And uh, speaking of distribution, uh, a Serbian film is uh, picked up by an American uh, company now to release it, and uh, they're talking about trimming it for a DVD release. They don't want to release it. Uh, or they're actually doing a limited theatrical run. They're talking about trimming it. Uh, I think it was like, I heard something where uh, like a minute 15 to uh, anywhere as low as 30 seconds from the movie. Fuck it, Just, don't see it. <laughs> Just to secure it, you know, in, in some cinemas because uh, it's, you know, it, it was released with an NC-17 rating, I guess. But I, you know, I think most people have already seen it. Anybody that wants to see it, and it's a, it's a movie that that will affect you one way or another. You're not gonna, you're not gonna be the same having seen that movie as you were going in. But uh, you yeah, know, every I'm time you hear it. the name a Serbian film, you'll just cringe or something. Well, yeah, I'm not going to get into a big discussion on the semantics of the movie and if it's good or anything like that, but uh, suffice to say that uh, there's a distributor that can, the name escapes me right now that, that you know had some balls and took a chance on it, and now it seems they're balking a little bit. So. Yeah. So. Yeah, a lot to lose, I guess. Uh, convention news, uh, Horror Hound Magazine is doing a convention in Columbus, Ohio in the spring. Uh, pretty good guest list for that. It's shaping up pretty nicely. I was checking it out. Don't know if I'm going to attend, but uh, I'm definitely keeping that on the radar because that's yeah not quite as long a drive as uh, the Cincinnati convention that went on last week. So 
Maybe I'll check that out. I heard the Cincinnati convention was a bust. I didn't really like the guest list that much. Like I said, you know, they had the walking dead cast there, but a lot of, I guess Norman Reedus didn't even show up. He had uh, shooting commitments. And, uh, you know, the guy that plays uh, the fucking hillbilly with the uh, hospital. Uh, I, I don't know his name, but that that is one of my favorite characters in the show, though. They got a lot of people at this uh, Columbus one they're planning. It'll be the first time in Columbus, and uh, they got a lot of people from the Nightmare on Elm Street movies and uh, things like that. But uh, I think I'm definitely going to Motor City Nightmares, whether I have a movie to show or not. So look for coverage for that. I know that's uh, spring yet, and I'm going to be. It's going to be a busy fucking spring for me, but hey, who knows? Yeah, uh, I haven't put up too much uh, stuff on the site all month. I apologize for that, but I've been really working hard on this series, and I just want people... I Hopefully people actually enjoy the series, because that's why I've been putting most of my... mostly all of my time and effort to. Uh, I actually put three reviews up last week, so... Uh, well, I think that last one I put up Friday. So, there is some reviews up there, and uh, the podcast from last week... Um, awesome stuff. You yeah, know, we, we do a podcast every week that usually turn out pretty badass. Yeah, I gotta get an interview. We gotta start doing interviews again. Speaking of interviews, I uh, put two standalone interviews uh, that you can listen to and uh, see pictures of without having to wait through the podcast for it. Uh, the individual interviews for Jessica Cameron and the talk I had with uh, Jim O'Rear are up in the interview section. So don't you, check that out. Don't you love people who say filmmaking is easy? Because I, I honestly don't think so. I mean, even though I only, uh, you know, I made a few short films in my life, but I finally wanted to make a web series, and I wanted to do two episodes every month, and oh God, is it, it's pretty, it's pretty hard, man. <laughs> I think scheduling around people's the hardest thing, and then, you know, you probably don't have that so much down there, but up here I gotta fucking shoot around the weather if I'm gonna shoot outside, so... Yeah, well, down here it's so unpredictable. Tomorrow it might be cold as fuck, and today it might be hot as hell. You never know in Texas. One other thing I wanted to uh, get out of the way before we sign off here is I just, I've been reading up a lot of it. I'm pretty excited about it. You might think I'm lame for being excited about it, but the return, hopefully, of quality films from Dario Argento, the uh, Dracula 3D is in post-production now. Have you heard anything about this? Uh, I haven't heard anything about that, but uh, Dracula 3D? Yeah, Dracula 3D, I guess uh, it's all going to take place in Transylvania, more or less like the, uh, the uh, Hammer film, Horror of Dracula, which is one of my favorite films. And uh, he's got some cool people, Aja's in it. And, I'm looking up pictures. It looks pretty good, but man, honestly, I think Dario Argento doesn't have it anymore. Well, see, he's working with a lot of the people that he worked with in the past. On some, see, he's got the same... Uh, Cameraman that he had, camera crews that he had on, uh, I think, uh, Suspiria and uh, Phenomena, and uh, Rutger Hauer's in this movie. So that's going to be pretty cool. I, I'm um, looking it up right now, looking up pictures in it. I don't know, man. It, it looks, I guess it looks all right, but it looks like he's using too many, you know, sexy people, so to say. And then they have uh, Thomas Crinchman or whatever the fuck his name is as Dracula. Really? <laughs> yeah, he was in the, uh, did you ever see the Stendhal Syndrome? He was in that. He was really good at it. Uh, isn't that the one Troma released? No, I don't think so. The, 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 wait, well, what's it called? The Stendhal Syndrome. Yeah, that's the one Troma released, dude. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh, I don't have a Troma DVD of it. Because, hey, uh, Troma and, uh, I think Lloyd Kaufman and Dario are really cool with each other. Really? Well, uh, I, the one thing that I, the, the one article I was reading about it, that kind of struck me, is they were asking Aja Argento about her role in it. And she says, yeah, she didn't want to give too much away, but she does have some nude scenes and some sex scenes. And I'm like, wow, really? You can actually direct your daughter a sex scene. <laughs> He's done it before in that crappy-ass film. Uh, what was it? Uh, the Mother of Tears? That one was horrible, but she was naked in that one. I like The Mother of Tears. You didn't like The Mother of Tears? Not at all. But, uh, yeah, I found it really weird when I watched The Mother of Tears, and it's like, Dario Argento is this chick's father, and he's directing her naked. It's like, what? Really? Yeah, well, you know, I guess suffer for your art or whatever, but, yeah, I I don't know. Are you an Argento fan? I mean, I, I personally, I think he has his ups and downs. Uh, Jilo was, was crap. Uh, I don't like the card player. I don't like do you like Hitchhot. But uh, I thought Mother Tears was good. I thought the, I thought where some people could say, okay, it's got a goofy ending. 
But I thought it was a pretty good film. I thought Two Evil Eyes was good. I loved, loved, loved Demons. Even though he really didn't direct Demons, but he did write it. I loved Opera. You know, stuff like that. I haven't seen Inferno yet. It's on. It's for free on uh, Netflix, but I haven't uh, bothered watching it yet. Uh, Inferno's good. Uh, Phenomena's good. Suspiria, of course, and then uh, oh, Deep first, Red. Very velvet, Deep Red. Uh, Isn't Deep Red public I, domain? It might be. I believe and, it uh, is. And he's made so many good films. Like I said, he's made some crappy films. He's made so many good films. One film, I don't know if you've ever seen it, I have it on DVD, that he was an executive producer of, and uh, Michel Suave um, was the guy that uh, directed it. It's called The Church. You ever seen that? Uh, never seen it. I, I can tell you a recent movie he made, which I actually like, which everybody else seemed to hate. Uh, I, I don't want to pronounce it, though. I'll pronounce it wrong. It's uh, Galeo. Gilo. Hmm. Yellow. Gilo. Gilo, that's yeah. It. Dario Argento. All right, dude. Well, I have to hit. I have to hit the road now. So. Oh yeah, you're just gonna cut me off like that. How's your? What can we get for your final words? My final words of the day is uh, don't text and drive, or else I'll fucking kill you. And with that, we're out. Uh, I'm Tom, and that's Derek. Uh huh. Sorry for cutting you off, Tom. Enjoy. <laughs>